Okay, so lumped parameter modeling of thermal systems remains and we're just gonna power through it. It's really not that bad. It's by far the easiest energy domain to work with. And we're gonna see why in just a moment. So the two power flow variables for thermal systems are, let's realize that I probably didn't want to show you all that. There you go. Okay. Um, are, so the two power flow variables, meaning the variables that we multiply together in order to get power um, in most energy domains, are, in most energy domains, uh, we call them power flow variables if they multiply together to get power. However, in thermal systems, Unlike in the other energy domains, the power, the instantaneous power, as I'm going to call it, is not equal to the product of the two power flow variables, Q, the heat flow rate, and temperature, the temperature, T, the temperature. Uh, and so this is important to notice. And so I'm going to call out three differences. So this is difference one. The other two are, so two, there is no T-type energy storage element for thermal systems. Okay, so this is difference two. And finally, the D-type element does not dissipate energy. And I, and I guess that kind of makes sense, right? Because if it was dissipating energy, where would that energy go? So that's difference three. So, a little different, it does, <clears throat> a D-type energy, uh, or D-type elements for a thermal system doesn't dissipate energy, it in fact just resists the flow of heat, okay? The two types of passive thermal elements are thermal capacitors, which are the A-type elements, and those are the only type that store energy, uh, and the thermal resistor is the D-type, which resist the flow of, of heat. Thermal capacitors have thermal capacitance C, and elemental equation so I'll use dot notation here. T dot equals one over C times Q. <clears throat> so the time rate of change of the temperature of a thermal capacitor is proportional to the heat flow into it, okay? System components with significant heat capacity, which is the ability to store thermal energy can be modeled as thermal capacitors. So this is a lot of things. And so when you're using system dynamics to model a, a system uh, thermally, you're not interested in the details of the, the heat transfer. Um, of course, of course you are to a certain extent. You, you care about what modes, for instance, might go in. Is there radiation? Is there conduction? Is there um, convection going on? Um, we're mostly going to consider conduction in with this model because of the way that we're going to describe um, thermal resistance. However, it's not limited to that, and so you could model convection and you could model radiation it's just that your models become nonlinear turns out that convection or conduction is nice and linear which is cool so thermal resistors have thermal resistance r and elemental equation t equals r q system components that resist heat flow can be modeled as thermal resistors. The two types of ideal sources are the heat flow rate, QS, and the temperature, TS. So this can just provide 
a specified flow rate, heat flow rate, um, or it can supply a specified temperature. So very similar or very analogous to other types of, of sources that we've seen. So it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. It's kind of like, ah, oh, it's the same stuff over and over again. But uh, a little bit different with thermal systems. The first one that has had no T-type energy storage element, the product of the power flow variables is not the power, and the D-type energy storage element does not dissipate energy. So instead of a fish fry, we're going to have a fish boil. That is, we're going to do this problem about Carolus Carlton, who accidentally left a large pot of water boiling on the stove. Worse, a cast iron pan is bumped so that it is in solid contact with the pot, and his glass fish tank, which is carelessly left next to the stove. Careless Carlton. Model the sad situation to determine if the fish are goners. Didn't give you any actual numbers, so we won't be able to determine if the fish are goners, but well, I didn't tell you how long it was going to be. If we we're going to wait till steady state, um, then we'll be able to make that conclusion pretty pretty easily. So here's a schematic: pot of boiling water, nice cast iron pan in between there, and and here's the Kalos Carlton's fish, who is a little bit concerned, I would say, at this point. So. Let's try to do the model here so that we can get a good idea. So th if this is a boiling pot of water, it's going to be at a constant temperature, right? It's going to stay as a boiling pot of water. So TS, okay? We're going to model it as a source, a temperature source. And because boiling water is always at the same temperature, it'll be a constant source. Uh, Let's see here, this is R1 is the resistance. There's a lot of contact resistance in thermal systems. You'll learn more about this in, ther uh, in heat transfer in your senior year, next year. Uh, but there's a lot of resistance to heat in the contact there. This pan, cast iron pan, probably conducts heat pretty well, uh, but it's not perfect either so you could maybe model it as another resistance conducting the heat through it to this contact here which once again has contact resistance we'll call it R3 and then finally into the aquarium which we only have one other type of, of element so surprise this is going to be a thermal capacitance C okay so let's draw a linear graph and a normal tree. These problems are kind of boring because they're almost always really straightforward. This is the hard part is like determining what you're going to choose for your parameters. But once you've chosen that, it's pretty straightforward. So let's have a ground, which is a reference temperature. And there are going to be other temperatures here. So there's going to be a temperature of the source, right? So we'll put that node here and we'll draw the source to it. So TS, we're going to go through one, two, three resistances. So one, two, three resistances to get to this capacitance, this thermal capacitance. So these resistors, I don't really go into sign conventions here. The book does a little bit, but essentially if you draw all of your arrows away from sources and towards ground, we're mostly going to have the same signs. Um, it's uh, only thing that matters is interpretation, and in thermal systems, as well as fluid systems, usually it's pretty straightforward to interpret. So, here we go. Um, now, we should... Note, recognize something here. We have three resistors in parallel, or in, in series, I should say. We have three D-type energy or D-type elements in series, which our rules tell us actually we're supposed to combine to a an equivalent resistance 
R. So it's just an RC thermal circuit. Okay. So I'll call it R, and um, that sort of simplifies the analysis a little bit. Um, we can do our normal tree, which is cross variable sources, boom, and then A type energy storage elements. And I can't select any more using this orange as my as my actual tree and not these as we're supposed to based on our rules. And that get, brings us to variables and system order. So state variables, we have the temperature of the tank. So that's the cross variables on T type energy, or sorry, A type energy storage elements in the normal tree, which is C. And there is no T type energy storage element in this graph or in any thermal graphs. Okay, so none of that. So our state vector is just TC. Of course, I say state vector. It's actually a vector valued function of time. System order then is the number of say variables one, which brings us to our elemental equations. We only have two: one for the resistor and one for the capacitor. C here is one of them and R is the other. So C equation will be TC dot equals one over C QC. That's just from above. Um, in the lecture, we talked about how thermal capacitors work. And then we have the temperature of the resistor being proportional with constant of proportionality R to QR the heat flow through the resistor. Continuity equations can be determined by drawing only one contour in this case, and the one contour is just going to be this guy. And remember, this orange one is the one we're using, not these R1, R2, and R3. We're just ignoring those. Those don't even exist now. So all this says for continuity is that QC is equal to Q R, right? Finally, the compatibility equation can be found as only one of them as well by replacing or by placing this uh, uh, twig or um, uh, element that's not in the normal tree into the normal tree to create a loop and starting at this node and going to the end node, starting at the at the tail node of R and going to the end node of R, we see that TR has to be equal to TS minus TC. And now we just need to do algebra to find the state equation. Um, so we could draw our C in our R table here again. Um, C table is TC dot equals one over C QC, right? But QC is just Q R from here. Now let's write the R equation because we're going to need it. Q R equals one over R times it's T R, right? That's just from this equation here, but rearranged for the um, QR variable times TR, but TR we have is equal to minus TC. And that on those we have that TC dot is equal to um, one over C from here, but then we're going to plug in QR, so 1 over RC times TS minus TC. Okay, so say, say the careless Carlton went away for a while and we reached steady state. We can find out what happens in steady state easily. We could, of course, start off with an initial condition, solve these equations dynamically. 
but it's easy to look at what happens in steady state, which is after Careless Carlton's been gone for a while, we can just set this time derivative equal to zero because things won't be changing because it's in steady state. And we're left with zero equals this right hand side. And so I'll just write this steady state, steady state, the TC dot equals zero. And we're left with zero equals this, RC goes away, and we have that TS is what TC is equal to. And that, my friends, is bad news. Because if TC is equal to TS in steady state, assuming that it chaos Carlton waited that long, then that means that the other pot's gonna boil. Uh, or the other fish tank is going to boil. And I'm pretty sure that this fish is not going to be able to handle that. Now, the good news is that when Careless Carlton returns, he will have dinner ready. All right. I'll see you on Wednesday.